So I'm in the hospital. I just had an ectopic pregnancy. They did the, the surgery yesterday at night. I know that God is going to bless me with another baby. Whenever the time is right, his time is always right. I know that. Hello, KJ fam. I hope you guys are doing well. Guys, my energy is low. I'm even reshooting this video because the one that I shot before this one, I didn't like how it was like the camera and everything. The setup was just terrible for me. So yeah, my energy is very low because I'm still in so much pain. I just got discharged out of the hospital yesterday. So I'm still in so much pain because I had the um, operation. So yeah. My name is Gutleji Damayekana for those who don't know me. If you are new here, hi. Please make sure that you subscribe and join the KJ fam. So guys, this is a trigger warning. If you know that you don't do well with hearing about losses, miscarriages and all of that, please click out of the video because this video is going to be about that. And if you would like to hear my story, uh, yeah, just keep watching. It's a very sad one, unfortunately, and I really just want to share the story and help at least one person. So in 2020, I got married to the love of my life. Immediately after getting married, we got married in December. Immediately after getting married, we started planning for a child. I remember after the Nigi Siwe that day, was it a, that day or the day after? Because no one I know I can open my tally so. So my tally so young girl goes up and down. And immediately that day, because I think I got my periods like during that week, and immediately after I got my Nigi Siwe. My husband was like, I can't tell you to you know? And fortunately, I think I fell pregnant that day or maybe the day after, I don't know, because it was that quick, you know? And then we came back to Cape Town in January. Oh, it was not a quick. <laughs> you know, it was that quick. So we, we came back to Cape Town. I was like, no, man, my body feels so so different like i can like i know my body that much i knew that there was something wrong there was something different and i was like maybe i am pregnant my husband was like you think it can be that fast i was like i don't know because my body just feels so different you know and then um i bought pregnancy test on take a lot you see the the cheap ones i bought that and then i took the pregnancy test and I saw a faint, very faint line, second line. And my husband was not even seeing the line. He was like, I don't see it. I was like, I see the line. I am sure I am pregnant, but we're gonna test again um, in a few days because I'm sure maybe it's gonna be clear as time goes. And then we bought um, the other pregnancy tests. He learned a clear blue, yes. And then when I took that one, it showed three weeks plus. You see that three plus. So that means we were three weeks plus into this pregnancy. We were so, so excited. You see the thumbnail that is on the video where we announced our pregnancy um, when we were pregnant with our son. Um, we actually took that thumbnail for the first pregnancy that ended in miscarriage. So we took that picture, like we were so happy, I was documenting everything, like everything I was documenting. But after the loss, I just deleted everything. Like I was so heartbroken. Like we were really, really happy and grateful to God for making it happen, you know? And then I started experiencing lower abdomen pains, we went to a doctor, we were still staying in Mula Point. We booked for consultation, seeing a doctor there. And then we went, they took my blood test and the, the, the doctor was telling me, I think, I think this, I think that. 
he was just thinking thinking he was not sure about anything you know and they took my blood test the results came back that yes i am indeed pregnant um from the blood and then we booked for a scan a scan sister brangenfell and we booked for a scan they told us that we need to wait at least six weeks so that when we get to the scan at least we can see the baby we can see the heartbeat and all of that and fine we waited um the pain was coming and going coming and going until the scan and then we went to the scan when we got to the scan um they said that the scan shows that i am four weeks or something like that but according to my last day of the period i was over six weeks already so on their scan it showed four weeks but they could see that there's something on my womb but they couldn't um the, the heartbeat was not there because four weeks there's no heartbeat the heartbeat is starting from six weeks you know or on or, or at almost six weeks so when they measured what was inside my womb they saw that it was around four weeks so they gave me another two weeks of waiting until i can go again you know but while we were waiting for that two weeks i started experiencing excruciating pain on my lower abdomen i started bleeding my husband took me to the hospital we went to Mopri hospital they referred me to Hodeskir. from Hodeskir, they referred me to victoria hospital in in constantia because we were now we we, we now moved to deep river so we're close to the hospital in constantia you know so my husband drove me there when we got there they told me that it's a miscarriage i'm having a miscarriage oh guys that was the most painful yo oh, it was so painful i remember i told my husband that but no a miscarriage oh you need to and bless us with this child i remember shame it was so so painful to both of us and i was going through so much pain physical i'm not even talking about the emotional pain physical pain was on another level and they told me that i need to come back the following day make sure that i don't eat i need to come back the following day for the dnc um so that they can remove everything on my womb and i can move on you know it's fine and then i came back my the, the the following day my husband dropped me there they did the dnc um a few hours after the dnc they discharged me and they told me that if you want to be pregnant again it can happen as soon as in seven days when you are done with bleeding you will be ovulating and you can be pregnant that fast however we also advise you to just give your body some time to heal and maybe try maybe give yourself some time and try after a few weeks it's up to you you can try immediately or you can try after a few weeks so i was like okay and the only thing that i wanted the only thing that was gonna make me feel so much better was having a child you know so hey so we are on a process ne? Hey, is that just no oh. so we are on a process can work with because e e e symptoms ex exterior symptoms is very bomb to okay no this person looks pregnant mm -hmm. all right you don't disclose why you're pregnant. Yeah. But you post your pictures on social media because you love yourself. If you you're having your tea, you take a picture and you post on social media. And you know, up and they come oh. with space and say, Oh wow, congratulations, you're pregnant. You didn't even Where say you didn't even say you're pregnant. pregnant. And when you're going through a process and miscarriage, oh, it's painful. Nice. But again, you have to defend this space and that doesn't have nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. And then I, I think 
I think later on we did address it. Yes. And then Abanda the felt offended. Exactly. Like how how the hell do you feel offended? Go boom me boom. Address and get those like. No, guys. We, I, I think some 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 somehow we feel too entitled. Boom, mm. Abanda. Which is very wrong. Which is very very wrong. We are we are we are turning into the truth. Uh, but you know, guys, there, man. You know, 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 I'm having my tea, by the way. Missed it so much. So, um, yeah. I, I was now at home and I was just telling God, guys, that God, you know what's going to make me feel better. You know, when I talk to God, it's like, it's like, in the who can hear me, who can... Th that's how much I love God. And that's how I know that he is listening to me He's answering my prayers. I was like, God, you know, you know how much I'm hurting. You know how much this is painful for me. Like, you know how much I want a baby. Right now, the only thing that will make me feel better, Lord, is you blessing me with a child that's going to make it to full term and that's going to be healthy. I don't know why, guys, but I just kept mentioning that if you can bless me with a baby boy, I will be so happy. I don't know why I just kept asking for a baby boy but i just told god that i want you god to bless me with a baby boy if you if it's not a baby boy it's fine it can be a baby girl as long as you just bless me with a baby that is healthy that makes it to full term that's gonna wipe my tears you know so i remember i stopped bleeding um at four to five days after the dnc and then on day six and day seven we started having it, you know, we started doing it and oh guys, fortunately I fell pregnant that quick again, you know, but I was not sure because now the H, the HCG is still in my system on the pregnancy test. It still shows positive. We went to another doctor for the blood test because you know on the blood test it shows that the HCG is increasing which means you are pregnant but if it is going down that means it's getting out of the system so we went to the doctor I just came a lot doctor but um, the HCG came back going up so which means I was pregnant and then I just bought a lot of pregnancy tests so that I can crack the line the line just kept on going stronger every day kept getting stronger i was like i am indeed pregnant you know yo guys i was so happy i was so so happy grateful to god but i was also so scared telling god that you better make sure that this one makes it to full term and you bless us with that healthy baby and i was so scared you know you can trust like I had, I, I had crushed guys, like I crushed God with my life, with everything in me. But that fear, I just couldn't get rid of that fear because of what I just experienced, you know. And we waited, we waited. I was like, okay, let me just crack and we're going to book another scan at six weeks, you know. And we booked another scan at six weeks. We got to the same place that we booked for last time. I told them that that one ended um, being a miscarriage. And that's why it was measuring behind or something like that. And then they, they did the scan, guys. We saw the baby. We saw the heartbeat. The heartbeat was so strong. Everything was just so perfect. You see? That pregnancy was very, very smooth, even though on my first trimester I had so much nauseous, like I couldn't eat. I was, oh, I was, I was in, like I was experiencing a lot of nauseous, nausea, nausea, whatever do you call it. But it was so smooth. It was so smooth. I didn't experience any lower abdomen. I didn't, like I didn't have any, you know, I was like, God, if this is gonna make it to the full term and everything is gonna be fine please allow me to be happy allow me to enjoy this pregnancy and on my second trimester I really started to enjoy the pregnancy we even announced the pregnancy um, because on the first one it was only me and my husband who knew that I was pregnant 
no one like even my family members are gonna be shocked when they see this video that I was once pregnant or I was pregnant before we were pregnant with Lille. Um, it was only us. They only started knowing when I was 16 weeks, I think, with Ulile. Um, we started um, announcing, yo guys, you see that thing, Nyan, like my husband just mentioned, it irritates me a lot. Stop asking people when are they going to fall pregnant. Stop um, saying congratulations, wow, you are pregnant, without someone saying that I am pregnant. If someone gains weight, it doesn't mean that they are pregnant. If someone is um, having maybe mukab, it doesn't mean that they are pregnant. Like there's a lot of things, a lot of things. But fortunately, God blessed us with our rainbow baby, that boy, that boy. Guys, you know how much I love my child. Like, guys, you know. And guys, yo, 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 we prayed, we prayed for that boy. He is such a blessing. He is so intelligent. He, he, he was a boy. You, imagine, I was like, God, you, you, you answered every detail of my prayer. <laughs> I remember when I was pregnant, I even told God that, um, <laughs> you see guys, I have a temple here. So I even told God that, um, and guess what? That boy came with this temple. I'm sure if you were watching my stories on Instagram, you're going to see that I was saying on my stories that you better come out looking, um, you, you better come up with, you better come out with mommy's dimple. I used to write that on my stories and he came out with it and I was like, God, you answered every, everything, every detail of my prayer you answered, including the gender, you know, and Yo, oh, guys, we were just so happy. We were just so, so happy. Um, fast forward, um, last year, which is 2023, towards the end of the year, when my son um, was, I think it was 20, 21 months or something, but almost two years, we started planning for our second child because we didn't want for... We didn't want too much gap in between at least two three years gap you know um we were like okay let's plan for our second child we started planning for our second child and fortunately for me it always happened that quick you know on our first cry i got pregnant last year after getting pregnant last year i was like wow okay you're about to have a second child. Lisa is going to have a sibling. He's going to have a brother or a sister. I didn't mind a brother. I don't know. I just love boys. I, I really love boys. I think the reason why I love boys so much is the fact that my brother, I started staying and sort of raising my brother from a very young age. He started staying with me from a very young age. And a lot of, of my cousins who are younger than me, they are boys like i don't know i don't remember where i was i think i was still saying i think the reason why i love boys so much is because i grew with boys and i also grew around boys like my cousins my brother when they were growing up most of them i was around them especially boys like at home there's a lot of boys so I think that's one of the things that just made me want to be a boy mom or just keep wishing for more boys. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But um, at this point, any gender will work with me, even if it's a girl, a mini me, you know. Um, yeah, a mini me, even though my son is a mini me, I think I... I, I I think he's a mini me, you know, he looks a lot more like me than like his father. But yeah, I think that's where my love for boys just came from. I was like, yeah, I like boys, you know, but anyways, any gender will work um, from now on because I already have my boy, you know. And then um, I was uh, actually telling you guys about my second miscarriage. So last year we found out that I was pregnant and we were so excited. 
we were really excited and I started experiencing like so much uncomfortability around my lower abdomen I was not even six weeks yet because I remember we called the the scan we always go to that scan that we called on our first first pregnancy you know because throughout my pregnancy with Ulise every month we were going to that scan every month with no fail we were going to that scan um so to 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 to, to do e checkups everything 3d scan even up until i was 3d i think up, up until i was 34 weeks or something that's when we stopped going because it was close to giving birth and there was nothing to see much now because the baby was full full term you know but we called them um last year we told them that we would like to book for a scan and they did set up an appointment before the appointment i started experiencing lower abdomen and i was like oh lord here we go again So, yeah, I started exp experiencing the lower abdomen pains and it was just so uncomfortable, so, so, so uncomfortable. And later, I think later that week, I started bleeding. The pain this time, to be honest, was not as much as the pain that I had on my first miscarriage. Um, it was painful, but... I think I quickly knew that I was experiencing a miscarriage and my husband rushed me to the hospital. We actually went to the hospital that I gave birth, um, that I went to to give birth to my son, which is the Somerset, yeah, the new Somerset hospital. Um, we went there and they checked me they told me that yes it is a miscarriage that i'm having and they quickly admitted me they did the the dnc and after that i was like okay i'm taking months break i think it happened um i actually had my dnc in august last year so yeah i think i was pregnant in september and then i had the dnc in august last year and then yeah after that i was like i'm off like i'm, I'm off we we're not gonna be we're not gonna be crying for a baby uh, let's just take some time let me first just heal focus on our son and let's just forget a little bit about this pregnancy it's fine because he's still young anyways it's fine um even though we wanted by the time i give birth he will be he won't be three years yet you know if that pregnancy worked that means i was gonna have two kids three under like two kids who are under three years you know so yeah that was one of our plans but you know our plans don't always work but god's plan always work so i think that was one of the plans that was not god's plan you know so i we ended up losing that pregnancy it's fine that means now i had my third surgery um that didn't see and then i came back we moved on i just focused on healing emotionally because the physical part was not hard i'm not gonna lie but the emotional part was not was was really hard you know i didn't think that I was gonna th go through the same thing but it happened i had my second miscarriage and then this year we started planning but this year i didn't think that i was pregnant you know why because on the same day that i always get my periods of which i always have 
my regular periods like i'm not someone who i think i had my periods irregular when i was still a teenager when i just got started with having periods you know i always have my periods regular now as a, an adult so i got my periods on the same day i'm supposed to get my periods but i just started experiencing a different pain um first of all i got my periods but i didn't stop bleeding because i would go to my periods for like three to five days you know first three days have a flow and then the two days like fourth and fifth day it would be very very low because i'm finishing this time it just didn't stop but it was not heavy flow it was just blood when i am wiping after peeing you know i would see blood i was like ish why what is happening what is happening i was like okay maybe let me just give it a week maybe it's gonna go away i'll be fine because i'm not used to this but it is not something that is alarming because it's not heavy flow like the blood is very 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 light and i can only see it when i am done with peeing you know but then i got worried i told my husband that we just need to see a doctor we we went to a doctor here in table bay i did the consultation the doctor took my my blood um test yeah they took my blood and then they sent them to the lab so that they can check what is wrong because she asked me if i i am pregnant i was like no i'm not pregnant because i got my periods you know so i don't think i am pregnant and even this time even though i did have like tender breasts i had um like a little bit of nausea but i just everything just stopped when i got my periods so i was like maybe it was because i was getting closer to getting my periods to understand so i got i received a call from the doctor telling me that the results came back positive that i am pregnant and i was like pregnant and she said yes and before we can even have our second appointment i started experiencing a different painful painful kind of pain that i've never ever experienced oh that pain was it was i don't know i don't even know how to explain it it was on my lower belly and on my palm like it was a pain that i've never experienced i had two miscarriages already i know how they feel but this one was just so different from them yes i had a very very painful lower belly but now it was just connected to my palm i couldn't move i couldn't yo so my husband rushed me to a net care eh? so there's a close um net care hospital here close by um he, he just tried to make sure that we get to the car and we rushed to a net care because we were coming back from food lovers it started right after we got out of food lovers and then we got to the car i was feeling a little bit fine we got home but when we just got home it got worse so we had to get in the car and then he rushed me to a net care yeah? and then we got there they saw that i was in so 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 much pain it was an emergency and i just started bleeding even more when we got to net care and then they rushed me to the room they they took the blood tests and babandi and far away scan they didn't see anything on the scan and then the doctor told me that um they don't see anything on my womb which means i am having an ectopic pregnancy the pregnancy is the the pregnancy happened on my cube not on my womb which is a very 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 high risk thing because 
the pregnancy is not supposed to happen on my cube it's supposed to be on my womb so that means i'm having an ectopic pregnancy and then she asked if they can continue there or they would rather refer me to the public hospital which hospital do i usually use because i told her that i had two miscarriages already and i have a baby who is two years just 10 two years so i told her that i was using the somerset new somerset hospital i've been going there yeah well. so now we came to this one just because it's close and it's an emergency and we can afford to pay for this part of what is happening you know and she asked me if they should continue or they can just refer me to the public hospital and i was like please refer me to the public hospital because i knew now that it was gonna be even more expensive you know of which i don't mind going to new somerset hospital it has always been good hospital to me and if it's gonna cut down the costs of um the medical that we don't have okay um i just want to touch on this one we had a medical aid in 2021 yeah in 2021 we had a medical aid and every time we need to use the medical aid they would ask us to add money yeah bo? you pay medical aid every month we're paying three three point two yes i think we're paying three thousand two hundred or three thousand one hundred and every time we need to use the medical aid they will ask us to pay 60 percent or 70 percent of the fee and they would pay only 30 percent and we sat down with my husband we were like because i would like i was reading a lot of books about money and i saw that you can open your own emergency fund account on your bank account you know so i was telling my husband that baby we can just open an emergency fund and we can save the same amount that we are paying to the medical aid to this account and we know that we are very strict to only use it when we want to when we when we have something that is an emergency you know so we started saving money on that account but you know most circumstances you will end up using that money but starting like starting from last year we started taking that fund very serious and being very strict when it comes to it so we started saving emergency fund um on that account you know so for us to go to this um private hospital it was not hard because we knew that we had money in the emergency fund but we didn't have enough money that can maybe cover me being in the hospital for three days you know private hospital for three days so i knew that that one day will be enough for the private hospital and then the rest of the days i can be in the public hospital especially that hospital because i know i've been there several times so we were now transferred to that hospital and then yeah my husband paid the bills on this um, private one i'm not saying don't pay for medical aid guys if that will work for you you can do that but for us, what works for us is us saving for our own emergency fund and us saving the same, especially this this year, we started taking it serious, saving exactly the same money that we used to pay medical aid. We just save that money to the emergency fund and make sure that whenever we have an emergency, for example, if I do, um, if God blesses us with another baby, then that baby we can have um we can have him or her with private hospital because we will have enough funds to pay the private hospital for giving birth you understand even if maybe i have another c-section because c-section is expensive than the private the the natural birth i will like i will have that baby at a, a private hospital and my my husband will experience being there will have that experience of being there with me when i'm giving birth unlike when we were giving birth to our first child which it was during covid he couldn't come because of the covid you know but this time you see that experience we will have money because we started taking it very serious 
saving for that emergency fund and medical bills you know on that account this year so if you prefer the the medical aid you can do that but us like guys now i have so many financial advices that i can give to be honest because i have so many experience and i have seen ridiculous growth when it comes to finances um and my husband so if you would like me to share more about that i will be happy to do that so this is one of the things that i wanted to share on this one um so i was transferred to the new somerset hospital got there and they attended to me immediately and i was um rushed to a theater they did the surgery for the atopic pregnancy i actually have three scars on my stomach now i don't think i'm gonna be wearing crop tops anytime soon but at least i am now fine i'm not in so much pain anymore they had to remove my tube so i only have one tube now left and yeah I still have my womb i still have the other cube which means um god can still bless us with another child maybe next year this year i'm off I, I i'm really off i don't want to i don't want us to cry for any child i'm just off giving my body some rest one i just want to tell you guys that please don't lose hope i know how painful it is to go through loss especially when you really want a child but god god's timing is always the best timing i am sure he is not making it happen now because he knows why he he really knows why he's not making it happen i always tell my husband that it is not happening because god doesn't want that doesn't want us to have maybe a second child yet even though we feel like we are ready god knows us more than we know ourselves so it is not happening now because he doesn't want us to have a second child yet maybe he's gonna want us to have a child a second child next year or that year i don't know when but whenever he feels like it is time for us to he will make it happen you know so if you also went through same thing maybe you are still struggling to have kids just keep praying we prayed so hard we, we we prayed for all the pregnancies to be honest with you there is no one pregnant that we didn't pray for there's no one pregnancy that we didn't pray for we prayed for all of them but some didn't make it because maybe god didn't want but one did work and oh my god what a blessing what a blessing so guys i'm sure now you can see why we always tell you to stop asking people about pregnancy stop asking people about their wombs stop asking people about when are they having their second child I know it's not only us we are not having kids because of people we are having kids because we want to I know it's not only us because if you are having kids maybe for social media the social media is not gonna feed your baby and you know I believe almost everyone who is having kids they are having kids for themselves so stop putting pressure on people because you don't know what people are going through like i would see comments people saying that oh and i would get so angry because people don't know what i'm going through they don't know the pain that i'm going through they don't know the pain that i went through already and these questions they 
really 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 irritate me and i would really love people to stop doing that not only on my posts but on other people's posts as well i am so grateful yo my gratitude is just out of this world to god for blessing me with a child because now i am a mother i've always wanted to be a mother i knew that i wanted to be a mother and i am an amazing mom to my son so if i get another opportunity to be a mother to more than one child that i will be very very grateful for but guys you really need to stop asking people about when are they having kids um you know everything kids related everything pregnancy related just stop it please from the bottom of my heart just stop asking that question and i hope that this video helps at least one person who is losing hope don't lose hope god is still gonna bless you god is still gonna make you smile he made me smile with my little he made me cry i cried three times now but i also have tears of joy because i have my little you know so you're gonna have your rainbow baby and you can have more rainbow babies just like i believe that i'm gonna have more as well but just that the time is not now you know i'm going through so much pain guys i just wanted to do this video and yeah i'll see you on my next one i did record a few videos before i was admitted to the hospital before i experienced all of this um but I'll just edit them and upload after this one. Bye, guys.